Welcome to Tales from SYL Ranch, the bitch you channel where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. While I have your attention, I'd like to ask that if you like what I'm doing, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, share me on social media, and to tell all of your friends, family, neighbors, pets, and livestock to do the same. I'd appreciate your support via my PayPal tip jar, my subscribe star, my merch stores on Teespring, or a place on my website where you can support me further. And there are links to all of these in my description box. Well, a couple of days ago, President Trump made this tweet that was quoting Pro Pas Pastor Robert Jeffries from Fox News. Quote, Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats can't put down the impeachment match. They know that they couldn't beat him in 2016 against Hillary Clinton, and they're increasingly aware of the fact that they won't win against him in 2020. And impeachment is the only tool they have to get rid of Donald J. Trump and that Democrats don't care if they burn down and destroy this nation in the process. I have never seen the evangelical Christians more angry that over any issue than this attempt to illegitimately remove this president from office, overturn the 2016 election, and negate the votes of millions of evangelicals in the process. They know the only impeachable if offense that President Trump has committed was beating Hillary Clinton in 2016. That's the unpardonable sin for which the Democrats will never forgive him. If the Democrats are successful in, un, in removing the president from office, which they never will be, it will cause a civil war-like fracture in this nation from which our country will never heal. Okay, well, <clears throat> my response to this is the same as my old buddy Marshall Presnell, and he wrote this with which I totally agree. So, okay, if I were to say that impeaching the president would cause a civil war-like fracture, or a journalist or commentator would say it, it would be perfectly peachy keen fine. But when the president, acting as president, he should never say this, even when quoting others. To imply that him being in his position is the only thing stopping a civil war-like fracture is definitely over the line. A major faux pas, in my opinion, not to mention terrible optics. Bad Trump. Bad Trump. But even though it's over the line, in my opinion, he, ha too, has his First Amendment rights and can quote this guy all he wants. There's nothing wrong with that, illegal or wrong about this, but damn. Mondo stupid and idiotic movements, President. Now, I agree. I agree that Trump shouldn't have said it. However, terrifyingly, under present circumstances, <laughs> he's probably right. And Tulsi Gabbard actually said so after the Russian collusion uh, narrative fell apart. It was one of the reasons that she had my respect, and now she's changed her position, thus losing my respect. But for Trump to say this was way over the line, and even though that it happens to be true. Now, I believe that this country is, in fact, on a path to outright civil war. We are already in what amounts to a cold civil war, and its combatants are the insane regressive left and everyone else. The insane regressive left has started to really get on conservatives nerves. Hell, they're starting to get on my nerves and I'm a libertarian who will never vote for neither a Republic Republican nor a Democrat if you held a gun to my head. But the things they're doing, for example, the constant reclassification of everyday things as somehow racist. For example, the OK gesture has now been classified as white supremacist. Never mind that this has meant OK since the 19th century. Never mind that it dates back as far at least to the 5th century BC when this meant love. And this is all because President Trump habitually uses a very similar gesture when making speeches. Being unable to find any other racist dirt on him, you've had to invent one by redefining the OK gesture. You have also started to invade my favorite hobby, Star Trek, by classifying the bull haircut meaning white supremacy. Well, you ridiculous nincompoops, on Star Trek, damn near every Vulcan has a bull cut. I guess it turns out that they've been white supremacists for 53 years, and they just never knew it. Your idiocy has seeped into various Star Trek forums where they now won't allow images of Spock or other Vulcans because the haircut is problematic. You complete fracking morons. Now, the left also tacitly agrees with the Antifa, an outright terrorist organization. I've talked about this in my video, The Antifa are Violent Terrorists, for which there is a link to below. 
If you think that the Antifa are anything other than terrorists, then you've either not been paying any attention or you approve of the violence that they inflict. And no, I'm not talking about Andy. No, I happen to know that you love that he went to the hospital with a brain hemorrhage. I'm talking about complete innocent bystanders. Most recently, an elderly couple attempting to cross a street in Canada, but couldn't because the Antifa blocked their way, screaming profanities in their faces. Anyone, anywhere the Antifa go, there is violence. All you have to do is watch the live streams of the event. Then, of course, there's the ongoing attempt to oust Trump for no good reason. And remember, I am not a supporter of his. I have serious disagreements with him on policy and constitutionally. I just retain my own sanity and so therefore can look at this situation objectively. This constant maneuvering is continuing to drive a massive wedge in our country. It puts the nation at risk internationally and wastes the time of government, not to mention your tax money. The field of presidential candidates for the Democrats is made up of nothing but outright communists and socialists that no sane person will vote for. People in office, such as Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, referred to here on my show always as Red Cortez, constantly berate and insult anyone who doesn't share her provincial and myopic views. There are an unending string of ridiculous invented genders with no relationship to, with reality. In a sane world, we had, would classify most of them as mental illnesses. We're even required to know what pronouns to use with a person. And by the way, you morons, you can do this in English. It's pretty easy because English is a pretty fluid language. But what about foreign languages? Romance and Germanic languages assign a male or female aspect to every single noun in the language. Even the word for the changes depending on the noun that you're describing. So a simple phrase in French will demonstrate this, and I know French. Le singe est sur la, sur la branche. Well, translated, this means the monkey is on the branch. However, monkey or sange in French, is designated a masculine noun. It doesn't matter if the monkey is male or female. The word itself is designated as masculine. Hence, the word for the, in this case, is le, as in le sange. Le is used because it is the masculine form of the. The word for branch, on the other hand, branche, is designated a feminine word. Consequently, the word for the is feminine, la, la branche. I double dog dare you on the regressive left to go through the entire French language and somehow strip every single noun of the masculine or feminine designation that it's had for centuries. Just try it. The French already re resist the anglicization of their language that's been underway for most of my life. They will have none of you regressive left losers tampering with their language on a grand scale. Similarly, Spanish, German, and virtually every other language spoken on the continental Europe. Just, just take on French. I really, I double dog dare you. I want to see you retreating back to your safe spaces in droves when the French tell you, Va te faire foutre. Now these are only some of the ridiculous crap you engage in that has sane people seriously pissed off with you. In fact, I saw somebody on Facebook, a conservative, that posted something that tells you volumes about just how pissed off conservatives are, and frankly, I'm kind of along with them. This conservative wrote, referring to Trump's tweet, Why shouldn't he have said it? He's right. Why are we incessantly accepting the left has the right to say what's proper? They're out in the streets screaming for armed communist revolution. They've been engaged in trying to oust the duly elected president with lie after lie since the day after the election. They are trying to foment this fracture and have been for much longer than Trump has been president. Maybe if we'd been saying these things and acting on them, maybe we wouldn't be in this situation. Why is it the right thing to run from the truth? We have to run to the left, all of it, into the same kind of joke the Ku Klux Klan is, and we have to do it fast and completely, or it's going to not be just a Civil War-like fracture. Now, I believe that what Trump said was inappropriate. However, I cannot disagree with what my conservative friend wrote. The United States is on a direct path to Civil War, and I know precisely when it's going to happen. Tuesday evening, November 3rd, 2020. 
That will be the date that the Democrats lose to President Trump. It will be the date that the Republicans take back the House of Representatives. It will be the date that the Democrats lose state and local seats due to blowback. And all of this will be entirely self-inflicted. As I've mentioned in two other videos, Democrats, it's a trap! And the Democrats do it again. And uh, there are links to both of these in my description box. The sane members of this country have had it with the insane regressive left. They have had it. Now, what will you do when what I've just said comes to happen? Now, I'm about to show you a slideshow in back of me. It's largely of the Syrian war, but there are images of other military conflicts in other populated areas. And some of it is graphic, with dead bodies and severely injured children. And if you think it might bother you, then you should turn away. Just click away right now. However, I hope that you won't, because I'm using this slideshow to make a point. Those of you on the left are already enraged beyond the capacity for rational thought. If there's a Democrat out there that didn't already click away from this video, it's only because they're my personal friend and they're just shaking their heads and chuckling because they think I'm deluded. But I'm flat out telling you, you are enraged beyond the capacity for rational thought. What are you going to do when Trump wins? You'll be shocked, horrified, and even more outraged. If you think that how you felt when Hillary lost was bad, then you have another thing coming. Will wailing at the top of your lungs be the end of it? I doubt it. You've already tried behaving like a two-year-old for years and it got you nowhere. Will tacitly agreeing with the Antifa, a violent terrorist group, be the end of it? I doubt it. You've tried that for more than four years and it's gotten you nowhere. You hate over half of your fellow countrymen with a hatred that I cannot comprehend. You really honestly hate and detest them so viscerally and so deep in your heart that I literally cannot understand it. What are you going to do with that searing hatred that you have for half your countrymen when Trump wins? Well, that since behaving like children and allowing a minority of people to be bloodthirsty would-be murderers and having this deep-seated, searing, irrational hatred in your heart, you're going to think that it's time to start killing anyone who disagrees with you. Starting the evening of Tuesday, November 3rd, 2020, you will riot. You will set cities ablaze. You will kill indiscriminately. And when you do, you're going to trigger a civil war. The sane individuals of the United States will have no choice but to deal with you using the same violence that you use. And that is why I'm running this slideshow behind me, because that's what a modern civil war looks like. And that's what it'll look like in the United States. It will pit brother against brother, father against son, and more people will die than in the last civil war. Now, when the fighting starts, I urge the sane people of the U.S. to adopt the strategy that I talk about in my video, winning the second American Revolution in a week. And again, link to that below. Because I talk about how such a civil war can be ended in only a week and with relatively little bloodshed. But if the sane people of the U.S. Instead, instead wage a traditional civil war, then there will be blood in the streets of America's cities. Those of you of the regressive left be aware, this will be the outcome of your actions if you don't reverse course right now. Stop your insanity. Reverse your reclassification of everyday items, okay? Reject the, the reactions of the Antifa. When they show up, Show up yourselves. When the Antifa start beating the crap out of everyone, you beat the crap out of the Antifa and send them home bloodied. Stop trying to remove Trump from office. Nobody wants that. It will cause you to lose in a big way. Nominate a centrist for the Democratic presidential candidate. They can't possibly win in 2020. You've seen to that already. But they might at least suggest to the same people of the U.S. that you're changing your ridiculous ways. Tell idiots like Red Cortez to shut the frack up. Best of all, vote her out of office. Stop inventing genders. You're either male or female. Deal. Stop trying to manipulate the English language. It's perfectly fine the way it is, and in any case, it'll only work with a fluid language like English. Try it with the European continent, and they will probably kiss your ass. Ta te faire foutre. If you don't do this, and if the sane members of the U.S. don't heed my strategy, 
than what you see here behind me will what be what the United States and her cities look like. Is that the kind of horror that you really want? And that is all I have to say about that. I'd love to keep the conversation going, so please leave your comments, questions, and nasty remarks, and I'll do my best to respond to you. So thanks for watching, and that's all the time that we have today for this episode of the highly acclaimed, world-renowned Tales from SYL Ranch, the bit you channel where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds.